Sean Don here, program four recap, coming in hot. Lots of good training theory in this one, so strap in. Welcome friends. Before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that if you're a coach or an athlete who's like into the ins and outs of training theory like me, then you need to go sign up for my Patreon. For a new low price of just $10, you get access to my full volume of training videos, the secret stuff that I send to my coach on the daily. It's chock full of thoughts and ideas and cues that I'm working on at the moment. And you get an in-depth look at what really goes on in my training behind the scenes with full training log access, plus other exclusive content like more in-depth program breakdowns and training theory periodization overviews. All that stuff, just exclusive for my Patreon community. So just a reminder, it's just $10 now. Go check it out, sign up. The link is down below in my description. And without further ado, let's get into this program recap. So 2022 program four training program recap. That's right, here we are. First full program of 2022 coming in hot off of a 10 day break for holiday break. Had a nice little trip back to Ohio and took a little vacation to Catalina Island with my girlfriend. It was great, nice and relaxing. But here we are back at it with the 16 pound hammer. This is the first of four cycles where I'm starting to build up in hammer weights. I'm trying to develop a little bit more special strength and build the foundation over the next few cycles. I'm also bumping up to five days of throwing per week. I was doing four over the course of the fall, but it's 2022 now, the season is coming. I gotta step it up, gotta get my nose to the grindstone. This added frequency I think should help technical development and feeling, which is kind of where I've been lacking the past few months. Like physical state is there, but technically I'm not where I think I should need to be. So this uh, extra throwing day per week should help that out. Also, this is kind of my technical development block. I'm doing higher volume drills for technical learning. I'm doing more stick drills, I'm doing my PUD series, and I'm doing more six turn, no wind throws. All stuff that really helps me ingrain solid technique, nice low intensity, high volume kind of building, throwing work capacity. With the six turns though, they're the number one thing that really helped me find feelings that I want when it comes to the turns, but finding those same sort of feelings off the wind is hard for me. So I'm trying not to rely on them as much this year. Last year I was doing almost a 50-50 split between no wind six turns and full throws, and it just uh, it doesn't connect for me. So I, I'm trying to wean myself off of them this year. I included them in this cycle just to sort of jumpstart my technical development, since I've been struggling a little bit after such a long off-season break, but this is probably going to be the last cycle that you guys see them in there for any substantial sort of volume. Additionally, a new thing that I'm trying this week is adding in volume each week for my main throws, for the full throws. Like I said, it's a new thing for me that over the course of the program seemed to pay off as my body kind of seemed to adapt come the end of the week. That early in the week bump in volume kind of created a little, you know, resistance in terms of, you know, Hans Selye general adaptation syndrome. And then uh, by the end of the week, I got a little super compensation or adaptation, which was great. Most of my best throwing sessions technically were on Friday and then physically, depending on what my lifting was like, Saturday was also good as well. And I think this will be very useful for when I start competing. Additionally, you guys won't see any video of this, but I was doing 18 pound wine and releases at the end of training. This is kind of twofold. It's to help make the adjustment to the 16 pound a little bit easier. Coming off of the light stuff over the course of the fall, I need that little extra special strength and stability to make the 16 pound a little bit more worthwhile in quality. And then it also kind of helps prepare my body for the next cycle with the 18 pound as well. Like I said, I'm climbing up in hammer weights over the next, I think three or four cycles up until the end of March. All in all, this program was quite solid. It started out pretty slow as expected coming off a holiday break also combined with bumping up in hammer weights. So like I said, that adjustment to the 16 pound was gonna take a little bit regardless of whether or not I had taken off 10 days for the holidays. It, it, it started slow, but then kind of picked up pretty quickly over the end of the first week. And then especially through the second week, I had quite a few sessions over 71 and 72 meters. And then I finished out the program with a respectable best toss of 73.82, very last session of the program, session 15, up in LA, getting in a little adversity, if you will, training camp, travel, practice, stuff like that, which was really good. I think it was a really good test for me to be able to do that, to go train in new rings and around kind of a little bit more chaos. And 
and then still be able to throw pretty well. So just shy of 74 meters in January isn't my best start, but it is a pretty solid place to be in right now. The best part was, I think, is that I did start to get some of my old feelings back in terms of feeling the hips working the hammer and reacting to the hammer a little bit better. And for the first time in six months, I feel like an 80 meter hammer thrower again. Like I know I'm not there yet, but I can sort of feel that metaphorical roadmap start to clear up and I can feel the confidence in my abilities starting to come back a little bit uh, as the feelings for the hammer also come back. So moving on to lifting. New layout here. I'm just lifting three days per week for the foreseeable future, for just three days a week lifting, but also paired with two days of active recovery. Why am I doing this? Because four days a week of lifting just seemed a little bit too high intensity and too high volume. I ended up feeling like crap most of the time. I'm taking more of a minimum effective dose sort of mindset for now, slowing things down a little bit to improve the quality of throwing rather than rush the physical sort of adaptation in the weight room. Basically the way this program shakes out and, and for the next program as well, it's kind of a combination. Basically, I took a four day a week, four week cycle and spread it out over six weeks. Program A is cleans and squats, which are kind of my primary focus right now. So it's a little higher volume. And then program B is snatch and front squats, a little lower volume as their secondary. For both program A and B, I have a sort of conjugate style in the sense that there's a lower volume, higher intensity strength day, and then a higher volume kind of speed work, work capacity sort of day, which has been nice to give my body a little bit more of a break in between the hard lifts instead of just piling it on throughout the course of the week. Plus, I do enjoy moving light things fast and dynamic on like the regular. That's one thing that I didn't realize I missed over the two years of doing Chad's training. So my body seems to be really appreciating that right now. Lifting in itself was pretty solid. I stayed healthy, which was the goal. Volume and intensity were quite manageable, getting back from a break. And I can feel the fitness coming back slowly and steadily. I know I'm not where I need to be to throw 80 meters right now, even in the weight room, but I can feel that slow, steady build week to week, which is great. Consistency is key here. The best part about this lifting cycle is that throwing quality did stay relatively high. There weren't any days where I felt super fatigued or like I crashed super hard or anything like that. So that's just lovely. The coolest thing I think I've learned this program is that I do need to have a strength lift in there no matter what the ultimate goal of the program is as it kind of provides a necessary stimulus to the nervous system. I found that most of my best days throwing came within the one to three days after a strength lift. Meanwhile, after my two speed days, I tended to feel pretty flat, which very well may be because of the higher volume and relative intensity, at least referring to velocity, which is a bit more taxing for the nervous system. So I think this is going to be very useful come competition season when I tend to rely more on speed lifts. I think I've learned that I just need to include a strength lift, maybe like I said, one to three days out from a competition to keep my nervous system kind of stimulated, to keep my endocrine system pumping the testosterone and other beneficial hormones. But all in all, this was a good blend of both throwing and lifting, and I'm excited to keep building over the next few months. So if you guys enjoyed this most recent look at my training, go check out my Patreon linked in the description below. It's just $10 to sign up and get an all access pass to all of my training. Thank you to my current patrons, Joe and Agne, for sticking by my side. The first live Q and A is going to be taking place in a couple weeks here. So sign up now. Don't miss out on that. It should be an all around good time. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like subscribe. And if you found value in this video, I, all I ask is that you share it with one other person. It helps me grow my channel and spread the good word of hammer to all. All right, friends until next time, remember grip and rip baby until next time.